Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It works. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so this will be a little bit longer uh, than we normally play with. So, um, but this, thank you all for being here. I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, but this is absolutely for you guys, right? So I noticed that there was quite a few people that are going on listing appointments. Uh, some people are crushing it. You know, it doesn't seem like they need any help, but they'll be great for kind of just sharing with us some of the obje objections that they see on a variety of like different lead sources too, right? So. Um, I'm kind of doing a few different things all at once. Um, so I just kind of wanted to break down too. I want to introduce our new, newly branded. We changed up a few things in terms of our listing presentation. So obviously the formatting is going to be a little bit whack uh, because I added the overlay of text. But this one's going to be saved in your guys' drive too, just as a cheat sheet. Because what I find is during these role plays and you know master classes and all these things that we're doing, uh, people typically get a little bit overwhelmed it's really hard you know we we speak really quickly we're excited you know so there's a lot of learning that needs to take place so never be you know fearful of asking the wrong question like the question is so valid because when you ask the question that's actually when you're going to start learning and i've noticed time and time again with our highest producing agents they're the people that also ask the most stupid questions right along the way so um it's really really good that you guys stick your heads out there and ask questions so this is totally open um i would love it if we asked them questions so I threw this together this is kind of just a cheat sheet uh, so I'm gonna do again kind of like a two-part thing right so one I'll roll you through kind of the cheat sheet of how I look at things uh, and then I'll break off into maybe like a little bit of role play style from these slides um, and then the second piece of this Sean's volunteered to be our Mr. Seller of the day. Um, that's gonna be giving us some of the very common objections that we get in these appointments, right? So um, for starters, you know, we rebranded this this deal. So it used to be the one roof branding. We felt that there was a little bit of confusion in terms of like when the sign went in the ground um, because it wasn't a one roof sign, it was a Zayback group sign. So for us, it was a really easy segue to say, hey, you know, it's Zayback group, a part of one roof. But we found that it's not a great place to start when they see a different sign go up or they see a different you know logo on our folder versus the listing presentation right so now we've got this brokered by exp realty very prominently and then powered by one roof so what i do on this slide right so um again i'm kind of i'm kind of thinking out loud here but i'll um because I know a lot of you guys like it when I like visually uh, put myself out there in terms of like how I get to this point, right? So um, we'll do too much role play on this part, right? So I get to the property and then the very first thing I do, so I always come with my folder, which we've got new folders coming for you guys. They're actually really, really cool. Uh, so I've got my folder in my hand. I always bring a laptop. I always have my um, hotspot. Right, I never want to rely on there being internet at the house. So I've done that before and it's like brutal when you try to go pull your comps and you can't. So that listing appointment, I fell flat on my face because of that and I'll never ever do that again. I hope no one ever has to go through that. It was super embarrassing. Um, so I've got my folder, my laptop, and then my water bottle, right? So um, the reason I bring the water bottle, right? So it's like, it's kind of funny, but it's just the reality and I'm a total freak about, you know, like other people's things. But so there's a couple of things that like I've learned over the years is if somebody is ever offering you something, typically when you're welcomed into somebody's home, they ask you if you want something to drink. So I used to, I got trained in the beginning that you always say yes, you never say no. So if they offer you a beer, you're supposed to say yes. Right. So you, you know, or you'd be like, I would rather have a water, you know, do you have a water is a better question than saying no. So, um, I started bringing my water for two reasons. Um, one, because I always felt I needed to say yes. And then two, I would drink the water and I didn't want to drink the water. So I brought my own water uh, because literally this one time, and I'll never forget it, and it stands out to me to this day, um, this is Spencer's favorite story. So, uh, you know, this, this little old lady like just pulls out this, you know, pro a movie Hargan Cedars cup from, you know, 1990 or whatever. It's basically yellow, you know, just puts, the, it's supposed to be white, obviously, right? She puts the ice cubes in the cup and I'm like drinking this thing and it's just like disgusting, right? So, cause I talk a lot and I get thirsty, right? So it's not something that you normally think of, but you should definitely bring your water because what I found is you get offered you don't get offered a water, you already have a drink, right? So it doesn't mean I say no. If they offer me a beer, sure. Yeah, just give it to me. 
right? Because if they're that type of person, you want to be in rapport, right? So this is my very first thing. So what I do, I think it's very, very basic, um, but from the front door, I introduce myself. I would ideally like you guys to have a business card in your hands if you can remember that. So you shake their hand and then give them the business card because it gives you like that extra layer of credibility. I think that's a really important piece. They're meeting a stranger in their home. Um, and then, so it's, it's really awkward, right? Like right away, unless you really put yourself out there. So, cause they'll just kind of like stand back and be like, oh yeah, what do you want to see? You know, and like, what's the thing we want to do? We want to tour the property. So what I find is if you aren't asking directly for what you want, they're gonna be in control from the very first standpoint, right? So you wanna remain in control 110% of the time. Say, great, hey Mrs. Johnson, how are you doing today? My name is Dylan Phillips, I'm with the Zayback Group, thanks so much for having me today. Um, would you mind taking me on a really quick tour of the property and showing me around? And then, great, so then, so then when she starts the touring process, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk all of my things, right? Like at this point, my hands are still full. So I'm walking all of my things to a part of the house that I've already identified that I'm going to be the most comfortable to sit in, right? So you don't wanna carry all your things, it's awkward, you can't really do things, it's weird. But you also, you really just wanna set your things down where you're comfortable and then I just confirm that that's okay. I'll typically be like, oh, I'm gonna go set my things down on your dining table, is that okay? Right, and then 99% of the time they're like, yeah, absolutely. Right, so then you don't get to that awkward point when you're done where they walk you back to the front door and they're like, thanks, goodbye. Like what a shitty way to end this, right? After all the hard work to get that appointment, right? We need to set ourselves up to sit down and explore things, right? Uh, so that, that's a really big thing, right? So now I'm touring the property. There's a few things I like to point out because touring the property you can get very in your own head about it. So just do your absolute best to stay like live in the moment. Don't be thinking about what you're gonna say when you sit down where you just set your things. Don't be thinking about, you know, if you're gonna get the listing or not. Don't be thinking about all these other things. Um, really just try to be in the moment and be aware of, because a lot of times they ask you, what do you think we need to do in order to get ready to sell? And if you were in your own head the whole time and you can't process what you even just saw, you'd be like, oh yeah, it looks great. Then your photographer shows up and you're like, that room looks like shit. That bathroom's a disaster, right? And you should have absolutely brought these things up at the time. So um, don't be just like, you know, just like, oh wow, ooh, wow, great. And it's like a normal like 10 by 10 bedroom, a little closet, wow, great room. You know, and when you start saying that, I think it's gonna be a reminder to you that you're not thinking. Like you're thinking, you're thinking too far ahead rather than just being present and being aware, right? And the things that I really like to look for is like the accolades of like the kids or, uh, or like the folded flag, right? Like any service member stuff on the walls, family photos, things of that nature, because that's something warm, typically warm, uh, that you can expand to and talk about. Oh wow, you know, did your kids go to? whatever high school or do they play baseball like now you're trying to find things because it's kind of awkward for the seller too right so they're just showing their house to a random person that is randomly called them most of the time in our situation right it's it's rare that we're actually like invited over right but some of the times everything's going to kind of be different right but even in the warmest houses that i've already been to and maybe i grew up there partially I do the same exact thing because I want to separate myself from best friend or basically son to I'm your real estate agent and please show me around because and what I say in those appointments is I've never actually been here thinking about selling it. So show me around and show me some things that you like or don't like that I might have never even realized. So those are really good things, right? So um, there's a lot of expansion that we can do on the actual like walkthrough of the property, but I think keeping it simple is the best. But just keep, keep note of when you're ooing and you're aahing and you're saying wow, because sometimes they're like, this room's not good, right? <laughs> so it's like, why are you saying wow, right? And it's just a, it's just a way that it'll, it'll stand out to them. It's a reminder to you that you're not really paying attention to the actual awareness of, of the room, right? So now you, you've done your tour of the property, you've sat back down, you're gonna, you know, I would say, hey, are you comfortable sitting right here? Is this okay? Um, we sit back down right here. We're gonna run through some of your options and expand a little bit about some of your goals. So then I'll pull it up and I'll jump right into it. Um, so this is our very first slide. 
I, again, I've kind of notated these so you guys can keep all this stuff. Um, talk us up. So Zayback, so like all the, this whole banner down here, it's not down there to look cool. It's not down there for fun, right? Like we put it here for a reason. And the reason is most people don't have accolades. There's just random brokerage with XYZ team, right? Most teams, most random agents, like think about the abundance of agents. You know, we, we dismiss it all the time, but the top 1% means the top 1% for a reason. You're better than the other 99% of agents, right? And by being in the top 1% of the teams and you're a brand new agent and you can say, we are this, we are that, this is what we do. You're setting yourself apart, right? And the reason you need to do that, especially as a new agent, is, is going to set you up for more success and less objections being about how many homes have you sold in this neighborhood? How long have you been in the business? So you have to be in control of the conversation and lead them from a place of, I'm experienced, you don't have to worry about it, you're in great hands, through your tonality, right? And through what you're saying. So. This isn't exactly word for word, but this is kind of just cliff notes of what I like to talk about on the intro slide. So um, I'll say there's quite a few different logos going on here, right? So Zayback Group actually just won real estate team of the year from one of the most prestigious schools in Arizona. We've been featured in the uh, Real Producers Magazine, and we just won the best in small business from Phoenix Business Journal all this year. So what is that telling them? They're just associating you and your brand he won this, 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 and this, right? And that's like personal. It's gonna feel personal. And then, so then I move on to the brokerage, right? So Zayback Group is brokered by EXP Realty. We have been awarded a mega icon status from EXP, which is a 90,000 agent brokerage. We're in 23 different countries, and we've been served this award because we're one of the elites within the organization for doing over 175 transactions annually. So it's not like, oh, we do 10 billion in sales, we do this many, it's, we do 170, we do what you're trying to do, 170 times plus a year. So it's at least 175 transactions, right? So now you've set yourself apart, they know your experience, they know you work with the brokerage. Um, another thing is eXp Realty, for whatever reason, doesn't really get the, it's not the household name of Russ Lyon Sotheby's or it's, you know, it's becoming that. And I don't, I don't understand why it's not a Keller Williams. It's not just some big prominent brand. So you have to, you have to edify EXP. So I'll also tell people that we're a publicly traded, like we're a publicly traded company. We're traded on the NASDAQ. Um, and that gives a lot of edification to the actual broker piece as well. Um, and then, so this, all this line here, you know, I know I, I, originally when we put it, I'm like, oh, we put that for fun. But what we're saying is eXp Realty has been featured in Forbes, New York Times, The Inc. Magazine, Realtor.com, and we own Success Magazine, right? And you can say we own Success Magazine as a shareholder in the company, which you all are, um, because that is a eXp World Holdings company, right? So. <clears throat> now, right, we're not saying, hey, we market your houses in Success Magazine or this means that. Now we're just saying, it, it, you know, we're justifying who we are, we're credible, this is why we're here, this is why you've trusted us to come over and sit down and explore our options with you, right? So, um, the next page, the reason there's no notes on this is because I, this is the one slide I do read verbatim. This is our mission statement, or one of, right, our mission statements. And <clears throat> I say, so here's what one riff is. So remember, Zayback Group, EXP, one riff. So I'm kind of just like reinstilling, and now I've gone through what Zayback Group is, what EXP is, but not so much one riff yet, right? So one riff is a solutions-based real estate company providing personalized, hands-on, home buying and selling experiences all under one roof. So then I'll just jump right into it. I won't spend too much time on that slide. What we changed on this slide is we just bolded this information here to be like the cliff notes that lives in this slide. Because what we found is a lot of agents would just look at this slide and be like, me. Oh, I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna leave a copy of this so you can read that later. But the reason this is in here, right, is <clears throat> to, again, just keep drilling in that edification to handle all the objections before they come so they don't have any more like direct concerns when we're done with this. So intro, one roof to Zayback Group. So one roof, again, now this is the other piece that we haven't dove into too much. One Roof is our brand that is kind of an umbrella over our Zayback group and our cash offer service. So I'm not saying casual houses, I'm not saying One Roof, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying One Roof is the umbrella company that embodies our cash offer products and 
our traditional real estate scene. So <clears throat> uh, then, you know, going back to the bolded copy, right? So we want to give you convenience, control, and certainty. We're skilled local solutions advisor that provide unmatched insight, intelligence, and care. And then we're going to go over your lifetime reward status program that we'll run you through here towards the end. So just like really quick. I think I just wrote here too, this is your teaser slide. Um, all you do here is foreshadow into how we offer people options that provide them with convenience, control, certainty, and the rewards program, right? So real simple on there. Um, <clears throat> And then in terms of our promise, so this is your chance to show that we care for our clients at a higher level and how we haven't forgotten about the fiduciary responsibility. So this isn't the part where I like bash other agents and like talk smack about everybody, but I remind them of what that fiduciary like actually means. Um, and then we've, we've defined it kind of here more or less. But what I, what I oftentimes just like to say, because they're, they're going to read this later, right? So I don't like to just spew the words. So I'll say oftentimes agents forget about that fiduciary. Agents are typically going to come to you with a one size fits all solution. They want to list your house, they want to charge you 6% and that's all they know how to do. And it's good, not great. Sometimes that's absolutely what works best for everybody. Sometimes that's how we can serve you at the highest possible level. But we're also coming to you with some other options that have solved hundreds of problems for other homeowners. So it's always good to go kind of explore what's out there. And then once we figure out a little bit more about your goals and what, you know, where you're trying to do with this property, then we can direct you in that in that lane, right? So then in terms of the fiduciary, we want to be transparent. We'll provide you with full disclosures of any conflicts of interest or concerns that would, would affect the value of your property. And we promise to always give you multiple options to help you achieve your goals, right? So then <clears throat> if you haven't already talked about this, and this will kind of bounce back to the tour, um, I always, always ask like, where are you off to? in a very passive way, this is not the time. So what are your goals, right? You know, I don't, I don't ask it like that. So while I'm touring, it's okay to not just be looking at the basic dirty bedroom with the bed and a nightstand, that's, you know, that's, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but I'm asking them just passively, so where are you off to? Why in the heck are you selling, right? The same types of scripts, the same types of verbiage that's in our scripts. Um, so with that, that's going to help you kind of identify even as you're touring um, what you're going to need to talk about. And then you can dive deeper here. So I know you said you're moving back to Florida. Why is that? You know, I know you said your daughter's graduating. Where'd she go to college? Right. And then just keep trying to build into this because the people, they nine times out of 10, they just want somebody they can trust and someone they like and someone that they know that's in their corner if things go sideways, right? They're not necessarily, I think we, oftentimes we live in our own heads about people being so, like having so many objections about, oh, I list with the best of the best in my neighborhood. I only work with the guy that I've worked with for 20 years. All these objections are false for the most part because <clears throat> most of the time people don't even use the same agent more than one time, right? So, um, so again, just use the bolded content, explain fiduciary, remind them of how many agents, just chase commissions and give examples. But do that very, very lightly, right? Our goal isn't to be unprofessional by trying to bash another model. <clears throat> and push again at the options we provide. <clears throat> so then we move this slide here because I feel it's very important to go through these options prior to talking comps, prior to anything. And this is where you can kind of unravel more of the goal. Right, and this is another really good point, and I teach this on the phone call too. On, on the phone call too, but um, keep in mind, <clears throat> it's always a good place to come from without being so direct of being like, "What's your goal?" So if you could have this your way, if this process could be totally seamless for you, and you could just select how you want it to work, what would that look and feel like? <clears throat> and if their answer is, "I don't know," that's okay. Um, that's probably an indication that they're not super motivated. So you got to do a little bit more digging. But um, typically people like to use their imagination and like go, well, you know, we've got this house. We're not really sure what it's worth. They're like giving you all these things. We might not like the commission. Um, we might just want an easy cash offer. They're kind of just, <clears throat> and you're putting these options right in front of their face. So it helps them kind of draw that, <clears throat> draw that um, conclusion, right? 
Um, yeah, we need to buy another house, but we would need to sell this one first, right? So now you're kind of <clears throat> starting to learn how you can funnel these people towards one of the options. And the big change you notice here, we took away some of the options <clears throat> that we never used that I just brushed over nine times out of 10. So um, we went to cash offer. So here's just kind of what I say on that. This is gonna be your sure thing type of offer. Use your emotional intelligence here. Don't sell them the dream on the cash offer if their house is totally new and remodeled. It's not gonna be something they want. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, and then the off-market listing. So this is a listing strategy um, that allows you to give exclusive looks to your brokerage buyer pool. Also, this is a great, a great way for you to get a listing signed before they're even live on the market yet or before they're even ready to go live on the market yet. So this strategy is really, really powerful for people that are like, <clears throat> yeah, we're a little ways out, we're not quite sure what we're doing yet, but if we found a buyer, we might be interested. So we might be interested, so it's like, great, and this is all I need, I just need the exclusive right to sell agreement executed. This doesn't mean I have to go put your house on the MLS tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna wait for your green light in order to list that property, but this is the piece that allows me to send it out to my brokerage, show it to my agent, on my team um, and see if maybe we can connect you with a buyer that might be able to meet your price and terms prior to and maybe even just a closing date that works better for you but this is a great way to just passively get a listing signed um, just be cognizant of the window if you showed up with a 90-day exclusive um, off-market listing probably not gonna set you up for much success unless it's like they want it two weeks pre-marketed or off-market right um, <clears throat> So that's that way. And so, so just be open-minded to that idea. You might even want to start with your template on your offer out at least 12 months. And then if they object on any of that later, you can cross it out and change the date to a shorter timeline. Um, but we'll get to the contract later, right? So trade and listing. So this is home light, but please don't name drop home light. Um, have them be your partner for now. So this is where we'll go into more in depth on the home light product. If it's something that they've explained to you through your tour and they said, I'm buying another property. They may have em emphasized, I need to sell this one first, but I'm going to be contingent on the next sale. So this is the trade and listing option that will make sense for people most of the time um, that do need to buy their next house before they sell it. And that's like one of the biggest objections, right? So the biggest thing there is just don't name drop home light. We want, don't want them to go and do all their research on it and submit themselves to the product. We wanna be the one that connects the dots on that. Uh, <clears throat> and then the traditional listing. So what I say here is this is where we funnel majority of these appointments. We want the property to be in front of as many buyers as possible. Typically, this is the best way to ensure that we get the highest price and the best terms for you as the seller. So, and then I just emphasize again, you know, there's over 55,000 real estate agents in Arizona. This is the product that allows us to send it to all the agents with all their brokerages, to all their buyers that will cast the widest net possible to get you the best, the price and the terms, right? <clears throat> and then I'm just like, right on it, I'm be like, so which of these sounds best? Which of these sounds best? It's not saying which one do you think might work? which sounds best. So, and then they're gonna just identify one or they might identify two. And if they say none and they're giving you this short, like I don't know, none type of answers, those are good indicators that like, we probably just didn't set the best type of appointment and that's okay. I mention it all the time, we're never forcing somebody to sell something. This is just one of the pieces that we're going to need to have in, in, in order to have a successful business, right? Uh, then this page, so I, I wanted to change this up because what I've noticed on your guys' presentations is your bullets are very vague and not descriptive, right? So um, sometimes some, some vague language in here is okay, um, but this is my, this is your cheat sheet to why you selected those comps when you're live and in person. Because sometimes you have five and sometimes you comped it three days before your appointment and you've looked at 12 other properties and you don't remember, right? So when you say, well this, you just say, sold in June, it's 2,000 square feet, pool. 
Because like, what is that? Remember, how this is how you're going to sound to your prospective client. So why are you saying that that's a comp, right? Because they're justifying their price with this estimate. They're justifying their price based off the neighbor that has five bedrooms and they have three and they're a two story and blah, 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 right? So this is your best place to educate them on what a comparable sale is and why you selected these, right? So <clears throat> I didn't dive too much in depth, but I did update the, the bullet points here. <clears throat> so like if, and typically the way I like to do it, I don't have this particularly in order, but I like number one to be the best comp I found, number two, second best, number three, and so on. So, <clears throat> uh, but I've notated here, like this is why I chose this one on 42nd. This property, just like yours, has because you already had some notes right from your phone call they i know you mentioned you just replaced the roof so this one just like yours they also have a brand new roof and an ac unit so it's kind of just a wash on that line item right it's not saying oh well we did x y and z and they have no idea of what that homeowner actually did to the property right so just like yours this one also has a brand new roof and a new ac unit just like yours this one's also on a one acre lot they're also in a cul-de-sac right so they can stop like adding value to all these numbers if our comps match up right um, and this one they also just did a full brand new remodel just like you guys in 2021 so it's lived in it's not brand new but this one's absolutely your most comparable property. And then these buttons are all linked still. So I, <clears throat> I dropped the link in there so I can view the photos with them and explain my messaging again. But just the bullet points here, I'm just foreshadowing. Then I go straight to the photos. <clears throat> and then I'm kind of asking them questions along the way too of, no, what do you think about this house? Like, why, why do you think this one sold quickly? Another bullet point I like to add in here, you can do four or five of them, however wordy you want it. But another great point to make is <clears throat> uh, the days on market, and then also justifying when that house sold. Because sometimes to find your best comp, you have to go back 12 or 18 months, but you need to justify the differences in between the marketplace, right? So by doing those types of things, again, you're setting yourself apart from the pack, and you're helping them understand that you can be trusted in order to evaluate their property, right? Um, so, and then so on and so forth. This is not, I'm not gonna go through the same thing over and over again, but like here's some more examples. So like if they had a third car garage, okay, well this one's not in the cul-de-sac, it's, it's not quite an acre, this one's like 0.8, right? So they don't have that corner lot square footage in <clears throat> uh, this one, but this one did, have a totally decked out backyard. Like these people have an outdoor kitchen, they've got this amazing pool. I know you guys have a pool too, but like check out this backyard, right? <clears throat> so then, and you never wanna be like talking down the seller's property and talking up the neighbors, but you wanna do it carefully to where you can uh, justify that there will be a price differentiation between the two, right? Um, but this is the page where I typically spend the most amount of time um, and then diving through it and then copy and paste, make sure everything matches like your, your fonts. Like I've seen these with three different types of fonts on them, different sizes, and it looks nasty. So take your time in preparing this. Um, so then I go comps straight into kind of like what we do for the seller. Right, so this slide, <clears throat> again, I'm not gonna read this verbatim. I didn't bold things on here because it's kind of just good just to visually look at um, because you're gonna go in more depth on the next slide. <clears throat> so this is where you're kind of, now you're to the point, and again, so here, here's a very common thing with the comparable sales too that I'll step back on for a second, is <clears throat> people try to get you off track and ask about what's roadblocking them, which might be a commission. So they might, after the comps, okay, great, what do you charge? It's actually a really, really good indication that they're serious and they're probably gonna sign your agreement, right? But I'm not there yet. And who's in control? It's me. So I'm not there yet. We'll get there. Just a few more slides, right? And stay in control. Don't get off your slides. Don't get off your presentation just because you got triggered into ask, being asked a good question. Um, <clears throat> so it's like, hey, that's a great question. We'll absolutely cover that information, but we're just not quite there yet. So like, be patient. Right. Um, so here's kind of a few things that we offer. We do professional photos and videos. We strategically, so this is where I, like I upsell like myself um, in terms of understanding marketing and the internet. So th this, this part, I feel like this is honestly probably one of the reasons that I get listings because I, I don't feel like anybody else talks about this. Um, <clears throat> 
So I pitched them on SEO. So I asked them a question. I said, do you know what SEO is? They never know what SEO is, right? And now you're like, oh, the egg. You know, who's this guy, right? So, um, and I'm like, okay, well, that means search engine optimization, right? So let's say you're buying a new house in Austin, Texas. What are you gonna do? And I just asked him, what are you gonna do? Oh, it's like maybe a few of the outliers might say, well, I'm gonna contact my agent. Then my next question is gonna be like, okay, well, where are you gonna find that agent? And 90 some odd percentage of people are gonna find them online, right? So how do you think that agent gets found online? Well, they have the most reviews, right? So it's like, how do you think they collected the most reviews? And it's by your search engine optimization, similarly to when you're shopping for the house, the other people might be like, okay, well, I'm gonna Google homes for sale in Austin, Texas. Right? <clears throat> so now when someone Googles condos for sale in Scottsdale, how do you think your home pops up? Right? Do you think the, the, the agent, right? I, know I try really hard not to bash people, but the agent that walks through here and snaps some photos on their iPhone with the shadow and you can see them in the mirror and like I laugh it off because it's real and this happens. Some sellers are still paying the full percentage for that stuff when it's really not worth their while and their SEO is garbage and the house doesn't even perform well on the internet. So what we specialize in is marketing. So I'll elaborate too on a little bit of our YouTube, you know, our Instagram, our uniqueness uh, in terms of the marketing. So I'll say on the MLS listing description, I'll say a lot of companies and open doors and offer pads alike um, do terrible listing descriptions, but that public remarks piece is what feeds the internet all the SEO. Right, so you have to be selling the house in that small 800 character prompt. So you have to have the best possible listing description. I say in order to do that, we actually hire it out to a marketing team, which is true. Lister Sister writes these things for us. And then I say we review it in-house and then we, we tweak it, right? And then another place I jump off here, I'll go back to some of the, like the Zillow screen. And Zillow, similarly to hashtags now, has um, these little like blocks that pop up and it'll be like <clears throat> backyard oasis or um, basketball court or uh, you know beautiful yard or whatever it might be uh, and all those words get pulled out of your SEO right so if someone googles houses in Scottsdale with basketball courts you want your listing to show up, right? Because all they're, all they're saying is we want a basketball court. So Google's gonna work with that, right? Uh, so this is, a, this is a really powerful page where you can jump off between like, oh, we did this, 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 because everybody's gonna say that, right? So it's like, how are you gonna differentiate yourself from the pack? And that was a really powerful way for me because it goes way over people's head. And typically that's why you hire somebody, right? When you're, <clears throat> most of us don't trade our own money and fund our 401ks and expect the world because we manage it all and we move our money around and we make a bunch of money, we hire somebody because we don't want to understand it. You're sitting in this chair so you're justifying yourself of why you're gonna charge them a top price commission, right? Uh, so then in terms of the website syndication, same thing in line with the SEO, we're gonna blast yourself out or your property out to all the different Web, real estate websites, everything included. We've got our own customized app. You know, it's gonna be on all of our social media accounts. We've got over a million followers online combined. Um, and then we do some of the traditional stuff too. We've got cash buyers that might come in and make offers. And we also do open houses, totally optional if you want them. <clears throat> so then like, I'll just breeze back through that. But a big part of this page that's completely not notated that I always add is the SEO piece. So keep that in mind. Now, here's the juicy part. Um, people are gonna ask, okay, great, like what do you charge, <laughs> right? Um, so going back to our mission, our vision, right? We're a creative, solutions-based, goal-oriented brokerage, right? So with that comes options, right? So we understand that, you know, paying a commission is never fun, but you also have to pay commissions in order to make more money on your house. It's not like you just give away your equity. Um, this is a big part of the piece for us. This is how we feed our families. Uh, and, you know, keep in mind too, on these, on these big juicy commissions you see everywhere on Netflix and everything, it's all bogus, right? So we still have to pay out our brokerage. We still have to pay Uncle Sam. You know, we have to pay for office space. We have to pay for the marketing, the photography, uh, transaction coordination all these other things so that's just like our gross number right so let's keep in mind the net number here and that's also what's important to you right the net right because they don't really care if you sell a house for 350 and they're making 250 they're like what am I netting 
right? So um, focus on the net, why the net's important to you as an agent and why the net's important to them as a seller, right? So with that, we do wanna offer you some options. Both of them are great options. And we have an A or B option, right? So a standard or premium. Um, and then here's just some of like the things, and I don't take a ton of time on this, but I'll kind of just, most people don't want the base, right? And that's also the reason why we didn't do bronze, silver, and gold, because everybody chooses silver, right? It's kind of like the good old movie theater trick where they, you know, it's like 550 for the small, it's, it's 850 for the large, but then it's seven, 89 for the medium, right? So it's like everybody just automatically chooses the middle one. I like the Coke or Pepsi style where it's like you walk down the street, there's two vending machines. You don't think, am I thirsty, right? You're like, okay, do I want a Coke or do I want a Pepsi, right? So this is funneling people so you guys understand to more of the A or B approach. It's not like which one do you want? It's like pick A or B, right? <clears throat> so standard, I'll be like, hey, the standard product's still great. We still do a lot of the things we mentioned before, but there's also a few that we don't do. So we'll still give you that really important SEO piece. We'll still do professional photography. We'll still negotiate on your behalf. Still do, <clears throat> you know, uh, still do all the contracts for you, still have a, you'll still have a transaction coordination team assisting you. Uh, you'll still get our social media posting. <clears throat> However, with the premium package, package, this is where we start to see a lot more engagement happening online, a lot more saves on Zillow. Thus, that funnels more showing traffic through your house. And <clears throat> here's where you'll start to see the difference, right? So again, if you want the open houses, this is where we start to include them because it takes a lot of time and effort and energy to do them appropriately. We do door knock we do you know flyers we do all these things right um, and then we'll do also do a paid listing email distribution so on top of us blasting it pre-market to our whole brokerage um, we will blast it to an agent database to ideally potentially find you a ready willing enable buyer immediately um, direct mail, circle prospecting, neighbors and clients, the twilight photography, I'm sure you've done some shopping around online, and most of the time, I feel like people click on the twilight photos because they're pretty and they're nice and you kind of want to see what your backyard would look like at the most beautiful time of the day, where we all know and love, that's why we're here in Arizona, right? So <clears throat> you kind of sell them the dream on the twilight photography, 3D virtual tour of the home, that can be like a video walkthrough, right? Dedicated listing website and landing page, Lister Sister provides like 90% of this stuff, by the way. Um, Full-time dedicated transaction manager. <clears throat> so that technically comes with the standard, but we add it as a premium option. Uh, paid social media listing ads, make sure you do this if you offer that. Um, and then marketing blasts, feeding to market referral agents. So as we all know, and we can keep this basically in this room, but a lot of the premium is fluff, right? A lot of the premium we still do in standard because standard's not gonna be 1% and premium's 6%, right? It's a very small gap between the two. The very specific reason I don't have percentages listed here is because everybody's gonna be in a different boat. We don't have like a brokerage standard Obviously, the more money we make, the better. I think we're all on the same page with that. But <clears throat> this gives you the option to decide how you want to select standard versus premium. And I'm a big advocate of making people feel special, warm and fuzzy, like immediately. Then a lot of that poured through to my initial phone call to them, which they'll say, hey, you know, one of my investors contacted you. Um, they sent me your information. And you know, I understand you wanted a cash offer on the property a little while back, and you know, one thing led to another, and you either didn't get a cash offer, or no one had ended up buying it. I see, see you still have it, um, but <clears throat> with that, I always give referrals from my investor clients discounts, right? And that those investors are a big part of why I get to sh give you the option of the cash offer. And you might be surprised, sometimes the cash offer is the best option for people, despite its you know, low approach, right? So <clears throat> I like to say, and this is just me, and you guys can do whatever you want, uh, the premium package for an investor referral, I'm speaking in terms of just our database that we have internally, um, I start at five and a half. So I say I give you a half a point discount from our standard commission of six, which would get you the premium package. I started at five and a half percent, and I can go down to five for the standard, right? So typically the standard is five and a half because we still you know, provide you more than enough to get your property sold. The only objection that I've seen on this is people say, okay, great, well, can I sign standard? And then if it's not selling, go to premium later. 
And I say, no, absolutely not, because it's, it's just not how you do it. You don't buy the worst tires because they're cheaper and then realize how oh, these tires suck when they get worn down a little too fast and then you go and get the nicer tires later. You don't just pay the difference, you just buy the nicer tires, right? So I like to, and time maybe tires in the best example, but I like to give people a, a way to where they can kind of understand. It's like, hey, well, then we're working backwards. Like, would you agree? I like to ask questions too. Would you agree that having the best photography and marketing on day one or day zero or day negative 10 is really, really important and advantageous for you to get the most amount of traffic to sell this house the quickest? Do you feel like that's a really important piece? And they always say yes. Okay, so now if I send it out with good, you know, great photography and listing right up and all that, and then I go and add sunset pictures and video walkthroughs later, and we're, by that point we're reducing the price or something, like wouldn't you feel that as a buyer, you might be inclined to, to notice that the seller's really motivated and you might offer them even less, right? People start to understand that, right? And you're like, okay, great, let's start here and then go down here. And then people might start to say, <clears throat> uh, this is a great slide to hang on to um, in terms of the commission. And feel free from this point forward, these last few slides, feel free to move this around. I've tried it in different areas. I don't inherently notice like a major difference. Um, <clears throat> but feel free to hang on to this slide until you're through that commission. Um, and I'm always asking like, okay, well, does that sound fair? You know, so if you had to pick right now, like standard or premium, like which one sounds the most fair to you? And they're gonna be like, okay, well, you know, I guess I, I would prefer the, the premium, right? And like now they're gonna start to think out loud and that's great, boom. Like you just got through the hardest thing without them ever saying anything. And now if they're like, well, you know, I know uh, brokers are always negotiable on their commissions, well are you negotiable? And that's the fun part. I don't I didn't have time to write down the exact language that I'll add in the contract, but I can provide that. Um, and this is something I'm going to get through this here in just a couple minutes and I'll role play it with Sean um, in terms of like the actual signing process. Um, but while well, you're negotiable on the commissions, right? We can all agree that's a very big part of this. And this is a Dan Beer strategy, right? Keep in mind this guy has sold billions and billions of dollars of real estate um, and he's pretty legendary in the space, right? So I love this model because it's no different than anything else. It's kind of just the we know how it's gonna work and you don't. So, and you need to trust us and you know that. But yes, we're negotiable. So I tell a story. So I'm glad I'm recording this since no one ever seems to remember it. Um, I tell a story, so I'm like, okay, so let's just imagine for a second, this is really, really powerful too because you're, you're painting a picture in their head that they've already listed with you. Despite commissions is the best part. So it's like, okay, so let's imagine for the second you choose the premium product, we come out, we take all the photos, we do all this stuff for you. Signs in the front yard, neighbor comes over. Hey, my mom's getting older and she wants to move closer to me and your house just might be perfect. So let's just imagine Joe from next door comes over and he wants to buy the house directly from you and you wanna cut me out of the deal. And you're like, hey, you know, I didn't, I didn't think to ask Joe if he was interested, but because you've done essentially nothing, right? You're kind of like dismissing that like we just did all of this for marketing. So it's like, but because I haven't done much yet, you can call me up and just cancel the agreement. I won't charge you a dime. It's like an outrageous thing, but let's remember what we know here that they don't is Joe ain't coming over from across the street, right? And I'm willing to take the odds that A, another agent isn't gonna offer any product like this, and then B, that that's probably just not gonna happen, right? So it is outlandish, it's memorable. So you'd be like, oh, well that's awesome. Cool, okay, so that's how you can pay 0% in commission. And before this, I also say, um, <clears throat> yes, absolutely, commissions are negotiable. They actually start at zero, and they go up to that premium at six. So, and then, and then this is where I start to tell this story, right? So imagine the Joe story, right? So then I say the same instance, right? Joe comes over from across the street, but you're, you're a busy guy, right? Like you're working all day, you know, you don't wanna deal with 
anything. You don't want to have to meet the inspector. You don't have to do all this nonsense. You don't want to have to negotiate. You don't have to find a title company. You don't know which contracts to use. There's a lot of variables here that you might not know how to do, and you're going to want somebody in your corner. So let's just say for a second you want somebody in your corner. You found your buyer. Great. That saves you two and a half or three percent, whatever you want to say. Um, but I'll discount my fee to X. Right. Typically, that's where I start between like the one and two range. Um, I think one's too low, depending on the price point. But one and a half or two, I think, is great for this example. Um, so that's just there's no buyer's broker to be paid. This is just you paying Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, your client, or your clients paying you to sell the house to Joe. Joe is unrepresented. Right. So that's the big point I push here. Uh, now let's say the same instance occurs. Or I'm sorry, so now let's just say uh, there is a middle piece and I'm like totally spacing it. So the middle piece is, um, oh, so the dual agency piece, right? So um, <clears throat> let's say for an example, I set an open house this weekend and you know I get a bunch of traffic through, a bunch of interest as parties, and one of those parties is unrepresented and they need an agent to represent them. In Arizona, if all parties agree, I can actually act as a dual agent and represent both parties. And in that instance, I charge X, right? So it's 2%, two and a half, whatever percentage you want to give as a discount for there to each side, right? So you just made that gap. So like, I think it's relatively fair. I always think people get lesser service in dual agency, it's just my opinion. Um, but I think it's pretty reasonably, reasonably fair to be 1% less than your standard option in this instance, right? So whatever that was, you should deduct a percent, right? So if you want two and two for that instance, instead of two, I would charge you four. Right, and then the full price commission, which would be your standard or premium option, is now going to be uh, what I what I break down is. Uh, oh, so in this instance, right? So I blast it out. I get your marketing done. It's all tailored. It's all professional. Everything looks amazing. We send it out to all the brokerages, all their agents, and another brokerage brings a buyer. They come in and they sell it. I represent you. Susie Q from XYZ Brokerage represents her clients. The, in that instance, this is where you pay X or Y, or y standard or premium, right? You've covered all the basis in regards to commission. There's absolutely no reason you need to spend another minute on that and then if you want my like contract language I can add it to the to a template for you guys that breaks all that down um, the only other variable depending upon where we're getting these listing appointments that I find that comes into play is the sellers want to sell the house themselves so I don't this is a big one like I don't want to list it with a broker and be stuck with you right or what happens if I sell it myself right which is like the Joe example um, I say great try to sell it yourself I have no problem with that go for it because again I'm rolling the dice and it's outlandish and it's it's a reminder that I'm confident in my ability to sell it not theirs but if you want to try it that way and do it your way great I'm not gonna stop you from doing that because my commission model already says if you find your own buyer it's zero it doesn't have to be Joe across the street so, but that's me showing them that I'm confident in my ability to sell their home. So yes, absolutely. And if you want to cut me out, that's totally fine. I totally understand. All I ask is that you don't use my marketing or my photography for that. If you want to do that, you can pay up front in form of a retainer to cover all my expenses on the marketing. It's 1500 bucks. And you can pay that straight through the brokerage and it's called a retainer and it's totally legal and it's allowable. And then you're free to go use all my stuff wherever you want, post on your Facebook or whatever. Alternatively, you can just take my Zillow listing and share it to your Facebook friends if you want. You know, but that you're using now my marketing to procure the buyer. So I just explained that. And then what this is doing at this point is now you've like thought, you've shown the seller that you're 10 steps ahead. I've done this before, this happens all the time, I'm negotiable, I'm flexible, I come to the table with options, like basically what more do you want? If you're thinking about actually transacting and selling, what more? And that's why we've designed this presentation to be like, this is all your, we're your fiduciary, right? We're coming to you with multiple different options, multiple different solutions, and we're ready to go. Um, so the choice rewards program, I don't spend a ton of time on this, but in terms of the buy and sell, right? So we changed up the award, right? So now we're just going to give them a free appraisal on the buy side. So if you're selling and you buy with us, we'll pay for our, the appraisal on your behalf. That's if only if they use clear mortgage. Um, 
and I don't do like a ton of edification. So like you use our preferred mortgage company. We do have a partnership with them. Um, and then as far as the sale price, off the sale price of the home, we give you a quarter of a 1% um, back to help you with moving expenses and things of that nature to help you just ease the process, right? Um, because now we're turning one commission into two, it's just kind of incentivizing them to do that, right? And then in terms of the hidden inventory, uh, this slide, I kind of want to move this slide around a little bit, but this kind of goes back to what we already talked about. Cash for House is clear, Zayback Group, um, lead generation strategy, all that good stuff. Mobile app, <clears throat> uh, again, so this is something that you can edify them. And this is the part where I'll just kind of like breeze through it because I feel like we already got through the, the meaty part, which is comps and commissions. Um, but <clears throat> there is no problem with like selling the dream about our mobile app. It doesn't mean you have to sell the home on the mobile app. The mobile app pulls the data from the MLS. The mobile app gets used by our buyers in open houses. Um, and it is our proprietary app, which is pretty cool. Most people won't offer that. Um, so your home gets listed on here. We send it out to all of our buyers directly through this. It just shows we're tech forward. We're paying attention. We have hundreds of clients using the app monthly. Um, their home gets sent to all the buyers, right? And then <clears throat> this page too, like depending on how quickly you breeze through this, I really would emphasize you shouldn't be spending much more than 30 minutes tops on this whole presentation. Your whole listing appointment shouldn't take more than an hour. <clears throat> if we're there for two hours, you're there for too long, right? Sometimes I get it, I've done appointments that are two hours, it's good, whatever, but the appointments that I've done that have taken two hours, it's because you talk about too many things because the seller doesn't really know what the heck they're doing. I never got those listings. I'd get the listings where I'm cut, clean, to the point, sharp, on top of it, I know what I'm saying and how I'm conveying my messaging and they sign right there on the spot. So, um, <clears throat> but telling the story about Austin is a very important piece. So if you have the time, um, it's just good that people know who Zayback, what Zayback is, right? And who he is, right? And how we all got here, right? <clears throat> and that again, it's kind of just side note, but I tell the story too, that like everybody in our organization, we have 70 plus people in our internal office space, um, that every single one of the individuals that are in this building came from social media, every single one. <clears throat> so then it helps them understand like, okay, if we can build a whole entire company, a real estate sales company from social media, I think it's important that your home's also marketed efficiently on social media, right? So <clears throat> we know how to do that. We know how to do it at a really high level. And then, oh, that's where that slide went, but that's the last slide. Um, <clears throat> ton of information I know and I didn't think that would take a full hour to get through it but I hope that you guys got some value from it um, if you guys want I can turn the next week's role play into like a 30 minute quick version of how I go through this but uh, this contract like to me it's so simple and so there's a few key things that I point out about it I can do a Cliff Notes version now if you guys want. We've got like four more minutes. I think I could cruise through it. Um, if you do, here's what I want to say. Um, Sean's armed with some objections on like what we normally come up with on here. But if you do your presentation well, there's you should have handled 99% of any form of objection during that initial like 30 minutes with your presentation. Um, the biggest question I mentioned, and I'll mention it on any one of these last like few slides, probably this one. Um, <clears throat> is there anything that you're directly concerned about that we didn't cover in the presentation? So it's like ask them like one more time, like okay, are you signing or are you not without saying you're signing, right? And then right here the, the, they say no great you crushed it if they say nah you know you probably didn't crush it right they're probably just trying to scoot you right out the door right so if they give you like a definitive like hard no okay great so here's the next steps it's so important you guys have to say here's the next steps if they say what are the next steps amazing they beat you to it but the next steps are how do how do i sign up you know how many times agents just don't they're like okay great well I'll follow up with you in a few days and we'll kind of see where you're at. And it's like, you just show me you're the freaking man. Like why? 
you're just gonna leave right and like I've heard it I've heard this from the team like people were like oh well they were just like wanted me to come up she wanted me to list the house and I'm like well it's surprise it's because you're prepared right and we know what we're doing and you're gaining more experience and you're getting better so <clears throat> um, I'll leave that up to you guys you have a few more minutes and I can I don't I never read this contract to anybody ever if we get to this point and they're I'm passing the pen it's a strong indication that they already trust me so there's no reason to get caught up in your head about this contract. And another huge piece is if you are getting caught up in your head about this contract, that means you don't know what's in this contract. So read this contract and understand what's in this contract. So when you sell them the dream and they stop you about one particular question and you go, uh, well, <laughs> I can get back to you. You just killed the deal. Right, so like, why would we do all this work, all this preparation, all this, you know, all these things to create this opportunity to not know what the one element is in here, right? So um, keep that in mind. Yeah. For the what? The ten thirty one. Okay, sweet. So we'll we'll be done in two minutes. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll just go through this next time then if that's cool with you guys. But we do have two minutes. Um, that's totally fine. People get here early. That's okay. Um, the questions. Ton of information. I know. I recorded it. It'll be uploaded. Um, so you guys, please, please, please rewatch this until we reiterate this again. But does anybody have questions? Anything like directly stands out? Yeah. Do you go over list price during the presentation or yeah. the contract? Yeah, really good point. So I did kind of glaze over that. Um, at the point of the comp page, they do talk about list price, yeah. right? That's where I've already predetermined my range. I've predetermined what I think it's gonna sell for at a rock, rock, low bottom if it's a hoarder house and it's a disaster and there's rats on the floor. And then I've also determined if like it's the nicest freaking house in the neighborhood, I don't see a comp. That's a similar, I have that range. And then kind of in, as a middle ground, I typically like to have um, an idea of <clears throat> um, what ceiling I would recommend at each kind of different range, right? And then I think we're all pretty good at like having the emotional intelligence of understanding what pricing does in terms of like the marketability approach too. It was like, if we price it here, we find that we get lower foot traffic, right? So people's objection on that is always like, well, if we start high, people aren't typically buying at list price right now. And it's like, well, that's not necessarily true. People buy at list price all the time if we're priced well. If you're overpriced, they don't offer list price, right? Because they can see it. Like everybody's got an overabundance of data and information. So it's not like just because we list it 50, 75K higher, doesn't mean you just get 50 or 75K more. Right, <clears throat> so it's like I'm happy to do it that way, but um, just understand that it's not the way I recommend. And you know, I would rather be two steps ahead than two steps behind. So like, we can't go up in price. We can come down in price. We can reevaluate in uh, you know 10 to 14 days based off the traffic and see kind of where we go from there. So that's a good one. Anybody else? A lot of the people that are like hand raisers, you know, talk to mom on the phone. It might be the first call. It might be the fifth. But they're like, yeah, come on over. And you have a good presentation, you build a good rapport, but they're like, I'm not going to sign anything today. I got two or three more people. You know, the people that are just inviting you over, they're probably inviting everyone who calls them over. Um, yeah, it kind of depends. It really just depends. It's like people aren't ready to sign, they're not ready to sign. Okay. Um, try to do your best identifying those opportunities and treating them as such. But I, I try to just be like hyper consistent in my presentation and everything all the time. So that way we. It's it, worst case is practice, yeah. right? And I don't expect anybody to convert 100% of their listings. Like, can try to convert half of them. That'd be incredible, right? So, I think that'll be good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, get out of here, and we can recap this later. Sweet. Can we get a better picture of Austin on there? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, I shrunk it oh, okay. for this. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Thank you very much. Uh, back in anyways. Yeah. Students 10.31 here. Yeah. Yeah. That's for us, right? Or is it yeah, everybody. Everybody's welcome. Stay yeah, just <laughs> get your spot. I just want to see if this, I, I feel like this is green. Let's see if it got, oh, I got it. 
Yeah. Yo. Yo.